Welcome to Think BIM's Autumn Conference on applying BIM processes and supporting people on what we can learn from housing associations. Um, we're really pleased to have the team from BIM for Housing Associations along with us this afternoon. Um, and they're going to tell us a bit about the fantastic toolkit that they launched a couple of months ago um, and give us a bit of a deep dive into some of the areas in the toolkit and how it can be applied to lots of other parts of the industry. So it's certainly not just about housing. First up, uh, now regular spot of a digital news update. Um, and the very first one on that is an update from James Simpson. Now, for those of you that were um, at our conference in uh, June, the last conference, May, sorry, time, we had an amazing presentation from James showing how they're using motion capture and all sorts of other clever bits of technology around 3D modeling and VR to actually help them develop staged um, for big West End shows and concerts and a whole load of other things. Um, James was presenting with a stand at the um, Professional Lighting and Sound Association show um, just a week or so ago. Uh, and he won three awards for the cutting edge technology that he is doing in his business. So I thought that was worth a shout out and again, remind everybody of that fantastic presentation, which is available on our YouTube channel. So digital update in full now. Um, first one up is um, some project work done by the Centre for Digital Built Britain, CDBB, um, called Digital Construction on a Shoestring. Um, and they did some research work and came up with top 10 digital priorities for SMEs. Ooh, I am getting a lot of noise in the background. Can somebody mute that. Oh, somebody's muted. Thank you very much. Good. OK, we'll carry on. So they listed these 10 top priorities that they'd identified for um, digital priorities for SMEs. Um, we haven't got the time necessarily to go through all of these bits and pieces here, but these, the slides are available obviously through the video later on, and we will share the links for these articles if people want to go back and read them in more detail. Um, golden thread definition was also approved by government. So this came out, oh, interesting, my slides are not working. On the 26th of May as a formal definition from the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, um, and it comes in particularly three, four, five parts. Um, and it talks about what they believe um, and understand and have decided that the golden thread should mean. Um, so important piece there, and that has further been developed then by the introduction of the policy paper, which may well be talked on later on this afternoon, um, that was published on the 21st of July. Um, and the last bit to add to all of this in terms of golden thread, there was a really useful article published by the BIM for Housing Group, another one of the UK BIM Alliance community groups, talking about actually how the golden thread runs through again in the context for housing. But again, lots of useful stuff. Um, as you can see there, there are lots of standard terms that apply across various parts of the industry. Next one up. Um, an article that was published in BIM Plus about some uh, Innovate UK research being done by a team led by Lang O'Rourke. Um, this was looking at, as it says, augmented reality for operative productivity and continuous quality analysis. Really catchy title. But fundamentally, this is using um, mixed reality technology, using um, HoloLens devices to actually visualize rebar reinforcement, to be able to actually build reinforcement cages on the Hinkley project without the need for drawings. They then went through and used laser scanning technology and other equipment in order to validate that that, that was um, in the right place and the tolerances were achieved so that they could then use offsite fabrication to deliver large amounts of the reinforcement on the Hinkley C point project. Next up, um, an article from UK Tech News about smart and intelligent buildings and how FM provides the glue. Um, there was a lot of work, uh, useful stuff in the article, but in particular, their definitions for what they defined a smart building, I thought were really useful. So the fact that you needed to have connected systems so that you can't just have a whole series of different systems, they need to be connected. That sensors are vital, that you're collecting data in an automatic way, and the automation fundamentally is also important, so it's collected and gathered and, and then analysed and that data again being fundamental part of this glue that you're going to create a lot of data and you need to be able to understand how to use that. Next up, 
Um, we have a um, article again from BIM Plus around work that Morrison's Water Services are doing with Yorkshire Water, where they're managing roadworks with a cloud based system. And the really important one there was the second bullet point for me was that where they previously perhaps might have taken a week to develop traffic management plans, this is now just taking them 12 minutes by the use of this cloud technology. So again, fantastic improvement in output and uh, response times for the sort of work that they're doing. Next up, we have an article from Infrastructure Intelligence um, about the work that the Association for Consultancy and Engineering, AEC, are doing. And they've launched a new jargon free campaign, as it says here, aimed at business leaders to make decisions on digital transformation. So already they have published um, three or four blog sites um, and various other articles on their website around this cutting through the hype title to again help the industry understand actually how to move forward and take those first steps for the lot of people that still are doing that. Information management, so this new buzz term that's appearing in construction can deliver productivity boost. This is a report from KPMG, but again, some really big headline figures here. So for every one pound invested in information management, potentially could secure up to six pounds in terms of labor saving times while boosting efforts on the, on the uh, road to net zero carbon. So again, really powerful report, useful information and some really important stuff as to why actually information management is so important. Taking it in a slightly different direction now, this is an article from Future Scott magazine um, about Scottish Borders Council, who as a result of all the various um, trials and tribulations that we've had through COVID have now seen a massive demand in online services for their business, for, their, the, for themselves as a council. Some interesting figures in terms of decline, so 16% decline in the number of face-to-face -face contacts for services, 13% people drop in people visiting libraries, but in the same period, 16% increase in people choosing to access services digitally, and 173% uptake in digital services from libraries. Now, I appreciate this is a local council and their role, but again, it probably indicates actually how the world is moving now to how it wants to consume information digitally and no longer wants to use um, analog processes. This was a really interesting one because it, the title here, as it said, half the UK workforce lacks, lacks basic digital kills. I presume they meant skills and it was an interesting one that the title was wrong on a digital article, but we'll bear in mind, bear with that and move forward. But again, 17 million people, about half the UK workforce are identified as lacking basic digital skills, which is, as it says there, an alarming statistic. Um, and what needs to be done? This is some um, suggestions from this gentleman, Tom Boland at Zootech, as to how the industry can move forward. Um, and certainly it's an area we think we're going to explore further at Think BIM with a conference next year around the themes of digital skills. Next up, um, courtesy of PBC Today magazine, um, work that Northumbria University are doing in terms of developing digital construction skills boot camps. Now this is quite technical digital skills, as you can see from the list in terms of the role of coding, how to understand big data analytics and machine learning and introduction to blockchain. But again, these are more skills that certain parts of the industry now are going to have to start to get, in, get to grips with, understanding how to make business as usual as we move forward in this digital age. Coming closer to home now um, and a trial that was be, that has been done by Transpennine Express working on um, the rail services around um, the M62 corridor, I was going to say, but there's railways. No, anyway, we all know where we're talking about with Transpennine Express. On the Pennines, there's the answer. So they created a mission room, um, a immersive environment with 3D Repro and um, working with Balfour Beatty and Vancey on HS2, but are also seeing how this can be applied to actually reduce passenger anxiety and improve journeys for passengers in on the train services as well. So again, taking digital technologies, applying them in, in other areas to explain to the world and to public how to use things, how to navigate their way through the physical world with digital support. Um, we've had a really interesting and useful infographic published now on the UK BIM framework. 
So distilling it down into one infographic. Uh, and for those of you that haven't been recently to the UK BIM Framework website, the link at the bottom there, that has now been updated. So it is now a searchable database rather than just the set of PDF documents. The PDFs are still available, but you now have a searchable um, website that makes it really interesting and useful that you can just type in a term of what you're trying to find and it will pull up all the various places that that term exists within the UK BIM framework. So again, if you've visited the website but not for a while, I'd recommend having to go back and go back and see where you are. Next up, another interesting area in terms of development, um, a data trust. So Sir Robert McAlpine here working with other organisations to develop a data trust. So a hosting site where information is gathered from various businesses, which gives you enough amount of data that you are able to then actually do some advanced analytics and AI processes to learn from it. So where perhaps one business isn't able to see trends by bringing it together in this secure data trust environment, then actually you can start to see how you can boost productivity, quality, carbon emission reductions and health and safety overall. Over to work now being done by another part of the UK BIM Alliance. So this time the health and safety uh, executives BIM for Health and Safety Working Group um, has developed now some guidance which will be published shortly around project information requirements um, based around the ISO standards but very much with that health and safety overlay so understanding how you can ensure and manage health and safety linking it through to the CDM regulations construction design and management regulations uh, and put that information those requirements into project information requirements PIRs. And then final one for us, um, which came out only in the last day or so, we now have a new information management mandate. So we have the Transforming Infrastructure Performance Roadmap to 2030 published by government. And there are about 12 key areas when you get all the way down to section 19 Annex B. It's a very, very long web page to scroll through, but it has this information management mandate. So I've highlighted in red some of the important bits to ensure that procurement and contractual processes are compliant with the UK BIM framework. So that's a big tick for the work for the UK BIM Alliance, BSI and CDBB in creating that. Look at sensitivity to a project against ISO 19650 part five. So that security minded approach. Um, have information uh, have capability to deliver and fulfill information management functions in terms of ISO 19650 part one. And then also to define those requirements concerning the assets and projects in terms of part two and part three. It requires a project or an organizational information requirements to be in place. It requires for project information requirements to be in place. So again, proper strong terms now that these documents, these inf this information requirements need to be there. And therefore similarly rolling through the process that asset information requirements are in place as well. Security information requirements, if they are necessary in a project, should be in place as well, and that there are some exchange information requirements defined as well. There needs to be a digital mechanism for defining information requirements and then procuring, receiving, storing them. So this is um, the uh, requirements for a common data environment and that the fully and properly specify its information requirements. So again, this is um, linking back to the level of information needs standard that's been recently published of actually drilling down and why you want the information so that as it says in the, the black type following on that there is um, value for the information being created. And then the final one in the list of um, 12 items was to apply the same level of governments and rigor to the maintenance of information. So again, thinking for the life cycle of the asset. So those are all the bits and pieces that have um, caught my eye in the press in the last three months or so. Um, we'll go on now to a quick update on some of the activities of the UK BIM Alliance as well. So. Um, the State of the Nation survey was finally published after some, uh, we'd seen some initial results that were produced um, back in uh, May of March of this year. The survey was published in June. Um, lots of organisations were involved, lots of thanks to actually everybody that helped to produce the survey and to share it and then collate the information. Um, it's got the um, the forward, as it says there, from Anne, Anne Kemp as the chair of the Alliance and lots of really useful information to understand actually where organisations are in their journey with um, 
BIM adoption, digital adoption, digital transformation. Um, lots of really useful quotes and lots of really useful information, um, how it links into the UK BIM framework and a summary of where the UK BIM Alliance is now going to sort of uh, focus its efforts on the basis of that survey. And that will obviously become an annual event and we'll be able to start to see trends through against those questions that we've asked year on year. The UK BIM Alliance is also the home for Building Smart UK and Ireland, the UK chapter of Building Smart International. Um, some really good news here. So two of their committee members, Phil Jackson and Marek Sohoksky, have been voted to the International Infrastructure Steering Committee. So that committee that's um, managing the process for IFC 4.3 that's going to include infrastructure. Um, the committee was involved in judging the Building Smart International Awards, over 160 judges across the world. And if it's anything like last year's awards, there was probably over 200 nominated projects for that for them to judge. Um, and the winners will be announced later this month. They're continuing to give feedback um, on the IFC 4.3 for infrastructure extension. And there is also the Building Smart International Professional Certification Scheme. Um, this has been launched by Building Smart International in the UK. Um, the UK BIM Alliance has developed an additional module um, to cover some of the workflows and processes that are UK specific. Uh, and as it says on the slides here, they're now starting to train the trainers for this with a view that this will be available soon um, for another certification process around open BIM workflows. Um, and then the Building Smart UK and Ireland team have also um, reinstated the work that they were doing on the Infra AR, this Infrastructure Asset Information Requirements Project. Um, so if there's anybody that's working in the infrastructure sector that would like to get involved, then please get in touch either with us or directly with um, Building Smart UK and Ireland chapter, uh, and they'd be more than happy to have you involved to help out with that project. Um, last up in the update then, we have all these various events taking place for the UK BIM Alliance over the next few months. Um, so coming up in a couple of weeks time, we've got the next UK BIM Alliance forum in on the 28th of September with Building Smart meeting before that. The UK BIM Alliance East region is running an event on the 30th of September around the CIH and the National Digital Twin. There's an event in Kent on the 24th and then our um, Assemble and Forum events um, quarter four on the 15th of December. So that's everything for our update. Um, as usual, a fair canter through, but as we say, the video will be available afterwards and we've got the links that we can share through. So if you want to read some of those articles in more detail, by all means, you can look at those links.